Hello everyone, this is Nishant here and today I'll be talking about the F1 power units. Uh, as you're well aware of, uh, in 2014 Formula 1 took a big turn to introduce uh, 1.6 liter V6 engines instead of the conventional 2.6 liter V8. Uh, along with the 1.6 liter V6 they also introduced uh, the energy recovery system that is uh, basically the f the new formula one car is a sort of a hybrid it's not that the hybrid technology was not present before because in 2009 we had the introduction of the kinetic energy recovery system but it produced around 80 brake horsepower while the new uh, energy recovery system produced around 160 brake horsepower so so it's uh, it's the double double of the uh, what cars used to produce so the picture you see here is uh, are the basic represent the basic components of of the power unit. So, in the center you can uh, you have the 1.6 liter V6 which is coupled to a turbocharger. So we also see the return of the turbocharger which had which was not used in Formula One since the turbo era. So the turbocharger returns back, but it's the the way it works is considerably different. Uh, than what you than what you have in a normal road car so we'll be talking about that later on but uh, so we have 1.6 liter v6 coupled with a turbocharger this produces around 160 brake uh, this produces sorry around uh, 600 brake horsepower and uh, it's uh, the uh, and it's very less compared to the compared to what was produced by the 2.6 liter v6 which is obvious the uh, 2.6 liter V8 sorry so the 2.6 liter V8 used to produce around uh, 760 brake horsepower uh, while this produces 600 brake horsepower that's and that's the reason why you need the energy recovery system so when uh, the energy recovery system produces around 160 brake horsepower for around 33 seconds per lap so when you couple 600 plus 160 you get around 760 so so the horsepower uh, is basically still somewhat in the same range but uh, the how they generate is a very complex mechanism and uh, th that's that's what is the, the interesting part of the of the new technology so let's see the basic components so i've already talked about the engine coupled to the turbocharger then here you have the fuel tank and uh, underneath the fuel tank you have the battery the battery is again coupled uh, to a motor gen to, to a motor generator unit kinetic there are two motor generator units motor generator unit kinetic and motor ge generator unit heat okay so the battery is linked to the motor generator unit kinetic the motor generator unit kinetic is again linked to the engine by the crank sh uh, uh, engine crankshaft okay so if you don't know about what's uh, crankshaft you need to uh, study the basics of the engine and then you can understand this better uh, so the motor generator unit kinetic is coupled to the crankshaft of the engine and the motor generator unit heat is coupled directly to the turbocharger via shaft okay so the motor generator unit heat is uh, uh, coupled to the turbocharger at one end and then the other end of this is again linked to the battery and the motor generator unit kinetic is coupled to the crankshaft of the engine at one end and the other end of the motor generator unit kinetic is linked to the battery so all the three uh, components that is the motor generator unit heat motor generator unit kinetic and the battery are linked to each other and that's very important uh, that's very important because all the three components interact with each other to 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 generate the power and it's a very complex system which I'll be telling you uh, later on but uh, it's, it's, it's a very very efficient system and that's why you get 160 brake horsepower uh, also we have the intercooler here uh, intercooler is basically needed in case of a turbocharger because the when the exhaust gases exit the gas uh, exit the uh, exit from the engine and then spin the turbine of the of the turbo the air which is drawn in is very hot 
and so you need to cool the air before you feed that into the engine manifold so you have a third uh, intercooler which is a very large size which is a very large size and that's why it's a design consideration it's a very big design consideration for the teams and it it has uh, considerably affected the aerodynamic packaging of the of how the of how they package the cars so we'll be talking about intercoolers later on also uh, if you don't know about turbocharger you should get you should uh, clear your basics about the turbocharger intercooler and the intercooler before seeing this video okay now coming to the uh, workings of uh, workings of the of the of the power unit so here what you see is a very rough diagram of the power unit and uh, through this I'll try to explain the how the how basically the wo car works so what happens is that uh, I'll start from the beginning uh, from the pits pits if you if you if you say uh, so uh, Formula One cars have a starter motor, okay, so they don't have a ignition switch like you have in a no road car So they use an external device to start this uh, internal combustion engine. So once so this is started So your engine is rotating now. So now the driver engages the first gear And he gets out of the pits and this internal combustion engine is working like it normally works in a normal road car and uh, the ex exhaust gases are existing through this through this pipe and they reach the turbo okay so in the turbo you have the turbine okay this is the magnified view of the turbo okay so the turbine is here so what happens is that this exhaust gas as they exit uh, they rotate the turbine okay and this rotation of the turbine creates a negative effect which in draws which draws in the air okay the air is drawn in and then is fed to the intercooler here the intercooler is fed through the uh, fed here like the air is drawn in there is also an intake manifold out here which is not um, I mean not the intake manifold but an air intake uh, air intake line okay this goes somehow it's connected to the intercooler okay so it goes to the intercooler where it's cooled and then it is uh, fed to the engine again so what happens is that the more amount of air you feed into the engine the better combustion occurs and so if the combustion is better the power delivery is better that's what the basic of turbocharger is so the turbo is working your turbo is working but the important consideration in this case is that driver ha needs to be on throttle because when driver is on throttle the exhaust gases are exiting at a very high speed and this rotate the turbo at the very the spine tur tur the turbine of the turbo at a very high speed and so you get more intake of air which is fed to the engine so more amount of air is fed into the engine when driver is on throttle but what happens when driver goes off throttle say he is going into a corner so the exhaust gases decrease and so the turbine the turbine uh, spins at a slower slower pace so when the driver exits the throttle ex exits the corner and presses on the throttle he won't get the instant boost and this is what is called as the turbo lag so there's always the problem of turbo lag when you talk about turbochargers but uh, the formula one engineers have come up with a very clever way you know to uh, overcome this turbo lag and that's something which i'll be talking to you when i talk about energy recovery system working okay so this is the conventional working of the uh, internal combustion engine and the turbocharger now comes the role of the energy recovery system so before I tell you about how it works you need to know that there, this is a battery which is connected to a motor generator unit kinetic so this motor generator unit kinetic is again linked to the internal combustion engine so this kinetic uh, motor generator unit kinetic uh, like you see here motor generator, kin motor generator unit kinetic is linked to the engine crankshaft okay so the crankshaft rotates the, it rotates and is connected to the to the gearbox and which in turn is connected to the drive shaft so what happens is that as the driver uh, is uh, is on a track and he's accelerating down the he's accelerating down the down a uh, down a straight so he's full on throttle and uh, the turbo is spinning the turbine is spinning at a very high speed 
and it's uh, giving the a extra boost of air that's one way and the next thing which the turbo does is that it's connected via mechanical shaft to the motor generator unit heat okay so the turbine of the turbo is connected to the motor generator unit heat so the rotation of the turbine in turn rotates this mechanical shaft over here and this rotation is again uh, converted this mechanical energy is again converted into electrical energy by motor generator unit heat and this then gets stored in the battery okay this is the role of the motor generator unit heat when the driver is on throttle now say when the driver is off throttle okay like he's going into a corner so there is a problem of turbo lag which I explained to you before so to overcome this turbo lag the bat the e electronic control unit or ECU signals the battery to send the current to the motor generator unit heat so when the current is passed to the motor generator unit heat it converts the electrical energy into mechanical energy and this rotates the turb uh, the shaft present over here and this again rotates the turbine so the rotation of the turbine is maintained even when driver is off throttle and this is how they overcome the turbo lag so this motor generator unit heat acts as a uh, acts both ways that is it converts the mechanical energy coming from the rotation of the shaft here to electrical energy which can be stored in the battery and to overcome the turbo lag the battery sends the electrical energy to the motor generator unit heat which converts it into a mechanical energy and this rotates the shaft here which is in turn connected to the turbine of the turbocharger so if the turbine of the turbocharger is kept ro rotating that there is intake of air because of the negative pressure and the air keeps on getting fed to the engine so when the driver gets on throttle again there is there is a uh, instant boost so that's how they compensate so this is one part of energy recovery system now talking about motor generator unit kinetic okay the motor generator unit kinetic is linked to the crankshaft of the engine which is again linked to the gearbox and then via the drive shaft and the differential to the wheels now comes the concept of regenerative braking which is basically like the what the curse was so the motor generator unit kinetic is basically the curse so what happens is that when the driver goes into a corner he presses on the brake pedal the electronic control unit signals the engine to rot uh, sig signals the signals uh, the engine cr uh, that the energy which is being mechanical energy which is being transferred to the wheels sh should be now be used to rotate the motor generator unit kinetic okay it's a very complex thing but instead of the kinetic energy that is going into the wheels to cause it to cause it causes forward movement that kinetic energy is used to rotate the shaft over here and this rotation of the shaft causes the generation of a mechanical energy which is converted by the motor generator unit kinetic into electrical energy and this is stored in the battery okay so this is what happens when the driver brakes like driver goes into a corner he brakes so instead of the uh, instead of the normal brakes working obviously they also work but w the instead of the power going through the crankshaft to the gearbox and then to the drive shaft and differential and to the wheels the power is transmitted to the motor generator unit kinetic that is the crankshaft is connected to this shaft over here so this rotates and this mechanical energy gets converted into electrical and this is gets stored in the battery now when the driver goes on throttle say on a straight okay so on a straight he needs extra boost so what happens this battery again sends electrical energy and l this motor generator unit kinetic like motor generator unit heat again converts this electrical into mechanical energy and this mechanical energy is used to rotate the shaft which again rotates the crankshaft of the engine so in turn the 
crankshaft of the engine starts rotating at a higher speed, this produces more amount of horsepower and this is transmitted to the gearbox, drive shaft, differential and then finally to the wheels. So basically there are two things that you need to remember that is what is happening on throttle and what is happening off throttle. So like when the driver is on throttle, say on a straight full on throttle, so the engine is working at its uh, maximum rate and uh, say the driver presses on the boost button so what happens is that the energy stored in the battery gets uh, released and this electrical energy is transferred to the motor generator unit kinetic which converts it into a mechanical energy and this is translated via the shaft to the crankshaft of the engine and as we know the crankshaft of the engine is linked to the gearbox and then via the drive shaft and the differential to the wheels so as more amount of uh, electrical energy gets converted into mechanical energy by the motor generator unit kinetic the crankshaft rotates at a higher speed and that is translated in the increased rotation of the wheels so that's how the basically you get the extra boost via this mechanism and uh, at full throttle large number of exhaust gases also exi exit and reach the turbine of the turbocharger so they rotate the turbine at a higher speed and this causes the rotation of this shaft over here and this causes the this motor generator unit heat converts the mechanical energy into electrical which gets stored into the battery so there is simultaneous harvest and then release of energy while driver is on throttle the same thing happens during uh, during when driver brakes or gets off throttle so what happens is that the engine is told to direct its kinetic flow the kinetic flow of the engine that is via the via the crankshaft to the wheels instead of going to the wheels is used to rotate the shaft connected to the motor gen generator unit kinetic and this is converted again to electrical which gets stored in the battery and the battery releases the electrical energy which is converted by this motor generator unit heat in, into mechanical and that is used to spin the turbine of the turbo to prevent the turbo lag so simultaneous processes are occurring uh, uh, like harvest and release both are occurring on throttle and off throttle so it's a very complex mechanism but it's very efficient and uh, because of this we are able to maintain the 760 brake, brake horsepower and uh, that's basically how the F1 power units work obviously there are many more things about it like uh, the new if you see the what's uh, currently happening is the HCCI homogeneous uh, charge compression uh, which, uh, which is a very complex thing which is hap which is being done by the Ferrari and the Mercedes so that's something which we'll be talking in the next video and uh, the upcoming uh, articles as well so uh, till then uh, be safe and uh, hope you have enjoyed uh, learning about the F1 power unit and if you have uh, any confusion you can uh, comment in the you can comment in the uh, comments box below thank you, thank you.